60-year-old Stephen Mweru, a father of nine children, is one of the many community members who are using Limoto wetland to grow rice. We found him attending to his garden at the Limoto wetland wise use demonstration mini irrigation site, which accommodates 27 farmers. We were cultivating in this wetland before we were taught this modern method of farming. If I plant half an acre of tomatoes, I can earn between 2.5 and 3 million, which was not the same while still in the wetland. Solomon Mutia, yet another farmer, now engaged in cattle keeping, shares some of the benefits. Here I get a daily income. When I feed my cows well, I get milk and earn some money. I get 10 liters of milk per day. Depending on the feeding, I can get more. These are part of the over 300 farmers who are growing rice in Limoto wetland in Palisa, but through the Green Climate Fund Wetland Restoration Project were given livelihood options. In one enterprise that the, the farmers say they wanted was fish farming. That's why we have ponds here. Other farmers said they wanted to grow crop supply and they needed the irrigation technology to be installed for them so that they are able to grow crops upland other than the rice that they were growing in the what? In the in, in the swamp. Government also gave some of the former wetland users fish fingerings to start fish farming with eight ponds constructed at the Limoto Wetland Wise Use Demonstration Site. For those engaged in this enterprise, the results have been impressive, as Richard Omongole, the Palisa Senior Fisheries Officer, and Samuka explain. We got 66 million. That's the money that went to account, minus costs and all other issues. And when we sat with them, we say this is money that you have got, we let's agree which money do we reinvest and which money can we give you. And the, the farmers agreed to leave 23 million shillings for reinvestment. The other balance was shared by the members who were working in the fish ponds. The Assistant Commissioner of Wetlands in the Ministry of Water and Environment, Lucy Iyango, says one way to succeed in wetland restoration is building resilience of the communities and improving their livelihoods. People cannot conserve what they do not benefit from. No way, they cannot. Through the project, the government is ensuring that farmers access climate and early warning information so as to make informed decisions. They need to know when are the rains, what, what, what are we anticipating, too much rain, enough rain and when. So the Meteorological Authority, which is in charge of this component of the project, uh, they are able to provide through different mediums, the radio, uh, SMSs. I, I do receive uh, alerts from UNUMA. I, 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 I give them my email address and I receive their communications. They normally send those quarterly uh, projections for rainfall. So it has been very helpful for me in terms of planning and the, uh, the farmers that I share with, uh, whom we work together with. However, they believe something more can be done to improve access and also their agricultural production. But I think we needed as local governments to sit ourselves and look at what is very, very critical for us. So that the others that have lost even characteristics of wetland, we leave it for purposes of agricultural products, for us to have a win-win position. The economic enterprise we have is rice growing, which has not changed people from time memorial. The message really is that the government needs to come in to support fish farming. Improving livelihoods for communities that once depended on wetlands is one sure way of preserving these wetlands. One such enterprise would be promotion and adoption of fish farming. Benjamin Jumbe, NTV.